The gentleman from Michigan is recognized for two minutes. I thank my friend. Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 7791, the Access to Baby Formula Act, to prevent a future crisis like the one taking toll on families today. I'm a grandfather and a father, so it is important to me. Across the country, new mothers are going to st store to store in desperate search of baby formula. It's stressful, it's gut-wrenching, and it's unacceptable. Even when parents can find baby formula, the price has soared 18% in the past year. So how did we get to this dire situation? Last November, the Food and Drug Administration shut down the nation's top baby formula manufacturer, a plant just outside of my district in Michigan. Since then, the Biden administration has slow walked the response and failed to understand the consequences of their actions. The FDA should have reopened the Abbott plant in Sturgis sooner. This plant is consequential in large part due to a contract they have with WIC. H.R. 7791 takes critical steps to safeguard WIC participants even in the event of something like plant closure. This legislation requires preparation and planning for supply chain disruptions, ensures appropriate guide, ra guide rails, and will make and prevent disasters caused in part by the government contracts altering the market. As a parent, ensuring the, le the health and well-being of your child is paramount. They should not have to scramble from one empty shelf to another and worry about feeding their babies. This formula shortage is an urgent crisis and one that cannot happen again. I urge my colleagues to support the Access to Baby Formula Act, and I yield back. Gentleman from California Reserves, the gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I yield two minutes to the gentlewoman from New York, the chair of the Oversight and Reform Committee, Mrs. Maloney.